Hello, I'm Kat. And last, but definitely not least, is this wonderful instrument here. It's so long, it only just fits on your screens. It's called the bassoon. Now, just in case you're wondering how to spell that funny old word, it's just like this, bassoon. Now, if I say this word just a little bit funny, it might give you a clue as to why the bassoon is called the bassoon. The bassoon is a bass boon. Now, the really important part of that word is bass. The bassoon is a bass instrument, and what that means is that we're really, really, really good at playing low notes. I think the first thing I should do is show you just how low we can go. Earlier on, you met an instrument that is the little baby brother or sister of the bassoon. Now we know that they come from the same family because of one very special thing, this here, the reed. Now just like the oboe, this reed is a double reed, so it's made of two pieces of bamboo, of that panda food. And just like manna, I spent hours making my read and I'm really really proud of it and I think you should hear it on its own. Beautiful. But just to prove to you how important this bit is, can you see if I try and play the bassoon without it, this is what happens. Nothing. And the bassoon reed works as an instrument all on its own. Have a listen. If you like, you could have a go at making your very own reed at home. All you need is one straw and one pair of scissors. Now, a straw on its own when I blow, just like a bassoon without a reed, doesn't really do anything just yet. That's because there's nothing to vibrate. What I have to do is, number one, I'm going to take my straw and I'm going to just squash it a little bit in half. Really give it a good squash at this end. And then I am going to do two little snips. One snip on this side and another snip on this side. And in the end, it will look just like this. Now, you can see, when we look at the side, that there are two bits now which can move and flap around. And hopefully now it's going to make some noise. Let's give it a go. Bingo. Now this straw can only really make one noise because it is just one length. Earlier, I made a very special straw. This is one which if I hold it up really close, perhaps you can see I made some tiny little holes in it. Just like a bassoon, a flute, a clarinet and an oboe, they all have holes in it. So does this straw. When I blow at the moment, all of my air will come rushing out of this first hole that it gets to. If I put down one finger, it has to come out of this one. If I put down another one, out of this one. Until if I put down all of my fingers, my air has to go a really long way, all the way along the tube and out the end. And 
when I move my fingers and change where the air is going, it also will change how it sounds. It's exactly the same with my bassoon. You can see there are lots of holes in my bassoon and also loads of these silver things that we call keys that I use to help me cover and uncover the holes. My favourite one is this one here. If I wiggle this here, it makes this key up here wiggle. That is also a really important hole because that is the last one that my air gets to because my air goes in here all the way round this bendy crook all the way down this side all the way down here and to the end of the bassoon now you can see there's no hole in the end of my bassoon so what it has to do next my air it can't get out it has to go round the corner and then all the way back up this side here all the way along here it keeps going along this side and if I shut this one then eventually my air has to go all the way around and come out of this big hole at the end. So if I go down, if I shut more holes, my sound has to go further and further and that means it gets lower all the way like this. <laughs> Musicians spend a lot of time with their instruments, and I do nearly everything with my bassoon. I also like to make sure that he does all of the boring jobs with me around the house including the washing up. But he's a very fussy bassoon and he just does not like getting wet. So just to make sure that he stays happy, we have for him a rubber glove. What we have to do, we take this rubber glove and we put it over the end and then we tie it on nice and Right. So, if we try to play you a tune now, what do you think would happen? Let's give it a go. Now you've been meeting some of our favourite Roald Dahl characters and I would like to introduce you to one of mine. He is George from George's Marvellous Medicine and there's a bit in this book when he's making his fantastic potion. He suddenly finds himself dancing around his big pot and this piece of music I'm about to play you next is a tiny little bit of a dance where first of all you can hear him sweeping around really smoothly in this dance and then later on you can hear him jump up in the air and jump up again <laughs> Uh -huh. 
I'd also like to introduce you to one more Roald Dahl character, and that is the Grandma from Little Red Riding Hood. Now, if you come to our Revolting Rhymes and Marvellous Music concert next year, you will get to hear this music, which was written by Paul Patterson. And this grandma, all you really need to know about her is that she's a little bit wobbly on her legs. Oh, my God.